Hey, what's up y'all? If you have ever wanted to pull your own hair out trying to glue up your miters with one of these, well then I've got the goods for you today because these strap clamps or band clamps are out. They're officially done and if you think I'm coming at you with some super glue and accelerator trick, pff, come on. The issue with these strap clamps is that when you tighten the clamp, it squeezes all four corners at the same time. When you're gluing up a miter that causes all four of those miters to be sliding around at the same time, it's a little bit finicky. And besides that, it tends to align based on the outside corner of the miter. Really not ideal, which we'll explain a little bit more in a minute. The other issue is that you can only do one glue up at a time. Clamp up a picture frame, wait for the glue to dry, take off the clamps, move on to the next one. Just not very efficient. Another big thing for me, if you've watched some of my projects, is that it's really difficult to use these to glue up a non-complete chain. So like if you have four sides, that would be a complete unit, all you know enclosed. But if you've got just three sides, like maybe on a, a, the trim on a bookcase or on a chest, you just have the sides and the front trim, uh, you're gonna have a tough time with, with one of these. You could cut a perfectly spaced spacer block or a fourth piece that's not glued on, that take a lot of extra time and effort. A lot of woodworkers for a thing like that using just three miter pieces would say, well, let's just use some super glue and accelerator, make that a three piece unit and then apply it. Well, this knocks the socks off of CA glue. Spring clamp. Carpenters have been using these spring clamps forever for doing things like crown moldings, baseboards, basically any kind of trim. Uh, I don't think it's really caught on with just mainstream woodworking yet, but I think it probably will. The way these spring clamps work is you take the pliers and you open up the clamp. Nowadays, these pliers are spring loaded, so it's not like using chopsticks like it is with the ones that I have. Then you just put it where you need it on the miter, close it up, and it squeezes that miter joint nice and tight. You can put the pressure on different areas of the miter. It doesn't need to be a perfect 45 degree angle like you would need with this kind of band clamp. And a simple miter, just a plain miter, child's play for these spring clamps. Another huge advantage with these kind of spring clamps is that you can easily align the inside corner of the miter when you're doing your glue up. That's super handy because if you have one side, especially for hand tool woodworkers, because if you have one side that's a little bit wider than some of the other sides, and you align that based on the outside corner, you're gonna have a jacked up looking picture frame or whatever else you're making and there's really no easy way to fix that. Here's an example of that. One board is wider than the others and if you align it based on the outside corner of that miter, it's messed up. If you align based on the inside corner, whatever the wider pieces, piece of wood is, you can just plane off that extra width after the glue's dried up. Same board that's too wide, but if we match it up on the inside corner, then after it's glued up, the extra width can be easily cut off. And I realize I'm just using whatever scraps I had laying around because, hey, there's people from Australia watching and they can literally buy a black market kidney cheaper than they can a two by four. This is an extreme example. If your width is really that far off, your miter won't stand a chance anyway. Oh, hey, where's the, there we go. What's the, there it is. Whoa. Uh, anyway, whether clamping miters, woodworking, or doing anything else, the most successful people have one thing in common. They're continually learning new things. There is a free and easy way to learn about all sorts of stuff. Like we just had a hack attempt on a bank account and I needed to know how to get a bomb proof password. Brilliant is the best way to learn about math, data science, and computer science interactively. Brilliant.org is the sponsor of today's video. Check out some of these clips from the How Technology Works course. This is what I use to learn how to craft a perfect password that won't get cracked. All the courses are customized exactly to your need based on your current skill level. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, go to brilliant.org slash Frank's Workbench or click the link in the description. And the first 200 of you will get 20% off of Brilliant's annual premium subscription. It works perfectly for three-piece glue-ups like on a chest, like the trim on a, the lid of a chest or the trim on a bookcase uh, because you can apply the, the clamp to a wet glue surface and while that glue is still setting, it's not fully cured yet, 
you can put it into place and get everything just how you want to attach it and all that. If you've got a cured CA glue joint that's like you sprayed some, uh, you put on some CA glue, sprayed the accelerator on the other piece, bonded them together, that's a cured hard joint. You don't have enough or you don't have as much room for wiggling that joint around and getting everything just into place uh, because it's a hard joint. You, if you do too much, you're gonna snap it open. Like anything, of course, there's some considerations, some pros, some cons. With these pins, they're gonna cause some indentations in the wood. Not much, it's probably about the same amount as if you use an 18 gauge brad nailer. You can get rid of that if you want to. Personally, I leave them. I, I kind of consider it just a tool mark. It shows how the piece was constructed and you're really not gonna notice those little indentations unless you're looking for it. But if you do wanna get rid of that, you can, it, it's a small hole, like I said, it's about like an 18 gauge brad nail, similar amount of uh, indentation there. So you can take a little sawdust, glue putty kind of thing, fill it up with that. Or if you really wanna get rid of those pinholes, then you could uh, get a little sawing practice in and saw down that miter, connecting those two pinholes to totally eliminate it, then insert a spline. I'm using a regular dovetail saw. The kerf is just wide enough to perfectly knock out those little pinholes. Throughout the course of filming this little video, I'd clamped up this corner twice, so there's two pinholes that you can see here. And just in case somebody doesn't like clearly understand what I'm trying to demonstrate here, I'm gonna go in head and take off the little pinhole on this other corner too where there's only one so you can see that the kerf of a dovetail saw totally knocks that out but obviously you would only saw this after the corner is actually glued up for some reason it didn't occur to me to actually follow that through and insert a spline so here's a clip from a previous video of mine doing exactly what i'm talking about here sawing a kerf i sawed some splines and then i just glue it into place cut that off and after I cut that off with the knife, break it off, I did plane that up to clean it up. I've been wanting to make a video highlighting this tool for a long time because these things are awesome. Like once you use these to glue up miters, you will never do it another way. You won't use strap clamps, you won't use CA glue and, um, and a, uh, what's the word? Accelerator. These are, these are the best, these things are awesome. Plus you can do a ton all at once. I mean, I got a whole ring of these things. You don't have to have 45 degrees because sometimes we're not going to have 45 degree perfect miters. You might have to trim one off uh, a little bit and changing the degrees a little bit just depending on like what you're working around. You might not have a perfect 90 degree box. It might be 88 degrees or something and you do a little bit of trimming to get a joint that's going to fit nicely. Uh, and these do perfect for that. These are best for if you have a perfect 90 degree corner that you're wrapping around with a perfect 45 degree miter. These are just much more versatile, a lot more efficient, and I think they just do the job better. You can apply pressure in different areas. A simple miter is, like I said, it's child's play. You could glue up some really complex stuff with this, putting these in different areas wherever you need the pressure to be applied. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you on the next one.